What is up, YouTube? That's it here, bringing you guys another episode of In a Twinja. I'm finally moved into my newish place, and uh, it's time to start making more VGC 2017 content for as long as it's still the official format that we're supposed to play. So the team we're going to be using today is a little bit old school, and it's like three different cores. That's one of the main ways that I like to play this type of format. You use three different main leads, and your opponent has to guess which one you're going to go for. And even if they guess right, then, well, they don't even really win. You kind of just have to play the game. But we're going to run on the items here. We're going to be actually using a Choice Scarf Garchomp today. It's been a hot minute since I've used one of those. We're going to be using a fan favorite, the Sash Butterfree. We're going to be using Psychic Seeds Drift Blim, Electrophium Z Lele, and then Air Balloon on Salazzle, and then a Life Orb on Ferramosa. Very cool team, very gimmicky, and I think I should be able to get some pretty fast, quick wins with this team because this is a. This is, I had to reset my rating, and this is like the lower parts of the ladder, so I can probably get away with some of this stuff. So we're going to hop into some games, see if we can win some. Here we go. All right, so our first game is going to be going up against Bulu Metagross, Pelipper Salamence, Feeny Marowak. Oh, man. I could kind of use Butterfree here. I, I'm going to use. I'm gonna do it. Butterfree's so good here. What's he going to do? I think Butterfree might be fast. Butterfree's faster than Salamence, unless he's full speed, but like, why would he be? So I'm going to lead Butterfree. Butterfree's pretty good. If I were to lead, like, Butterfree... Um, Butterfree Salazzle? Is that the actual play? Because I can just bake out Sleep Powder and then Sleep Powder kill everything. I'll try it. I'll try it. So we're going to go Salazzle. We're going to go Butterfree. I think Garchomp's still pretty good here. And then... Lele? No. It has to be Mosa, but I don't want it to be Mosa because I know the has bullet punch on that Bulu. Or on the on the Metagross. But like as it stands, I'm very limited in my ways to deal with it. Like I have a Salazzle and Garchomp, but those just chunk it. You know, they don't KO. I'll bring the Lele. Lele's probably pretty good. Alright, so we're going into this game. I think that I'm gonna be fine. Butterfree actually has much higher speed clearing than most of those mons, and all he really has to stop it is a Feeny and like a Bulu. But those don't really stop the Butterfree. They kind of just like I guess you could do that. So, like, if I see uh, Feeny as a lead, that's going to be really, really good because I can just switch my Lele and Sleep Powder. If I don't see Feeny in the lead, I'm just not going to Sleep Powder the first turn. Or if I do, I'm going to make it so I don't lose the game for it. So, Salamence hits the board. And right now, Salamence would love to go for a Bulldoze, but I have an Air Balloon. It's pretty good. So, what I can do is I can just go for a Sleep Powder on the Salamence. He's in the air anyways, and I can just go for a Sludge Bomb on the Bulu. If Bulu wanted to switch out for Feeny, he'd eat a Sludge Bomb. If you want to switch in the Salamence slot, yeah, that'd be pretty good, but then I can just switch up my Salazzle for my Lele and Sleep Powder is Feeny. So it's this type of lead that really plays to all my Pokemon's strengths. So, worst case scenario, there's a Scarf on that Bulu and I eat a Rock Slide. That would suck. It's highly probable, but, uh, you know, I'm just going to go for the plays that should win me the game. We're going to Sleep Powder the Salamence. We're going to go for the, uh, uh, what is it, Poison Sludge Bomb onto the Bulu. Now, I'm thinking that, the, yeah, the Bulu's going to be switched. I was thinking, like, he probably has Bulldoze on the Salamence. He's planning on Protect Bulldozing, but he really can't. So Pelipper's going to eat a free Sludge Bomb, like completely free. Hopefully it's not a Scarf Pelipper, and hopefully it's not going to ruin our day, because this should be a two-shot on Pelipper. Uh, he probably thought I was going to uh, you know, use like Flamethrower or something, but I don't have to. Remember, Butterfree, like I said, is faster than Salamence, and we're doing pretty good. Now, let's see how I actually want to do this. I can actually switch out my Butterfree. I don't, I don't need to keep it on the board. Um, let's see what I got in the back. I got Lele and Garchomp. There's no reason to bring Garchomp out either. Not really. There's no real reason to bring Lele out either. Yeah, I'll bring the Lele in. That's fine. All right, so we're just going to Sludge Bomb the uh, Pelipper slot, and we're going to switch in Lele. And you may think that it's like a waste to switch in Lele because he's eventually going to bring his Tapus back in, but I think Lele does a pretty good job at dealing with all the other things that are around the Tapus. And remember, the Salamence is asleep. You'd have to wake up, hit my Salazzle to break its air balloon, and then if it doesn't KO it, he'd have to hit me again. So uh, let's see what Pelipper goes for. A Protect, that's completely fine. He's just waiting for Salamence to wake up. Salamence can definitely wake up this turn, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see if he even does. I don't think he's going to. Salamence to woke up! Hey, that sucks! And he goes for a Hydro Pump. Hey, that really sucks, you know? That's the most unlucky I've been in a hot minute. Like, one turn sleep into wake up Hydro Pump hit. That really is not great for me, but I still think I'm in a pretty decent spot. Uh, we could send the Butterfree out, but I think I'm going to send the Garchomp out. And we know he has a Bulu in the back. So that's that's a real big problem, eventually. 
but Butterfree can kind of deal with Bulu. I can't put him to sleep, but he can't really do that much damage to me. So we're going to go for a Rock Slide and a Dazzling Gleam. If we get Wide Guarded here, that's probably game. But I don't think he has it. I don't think he does. Maybe he's going to be switching out Salamence for Bulu. That'd be pretty good. Get, just getting a bunch of free damage on that Bulu slot. I think Dazzling Gleam Rock Slide, two, like, two turns of that, might be able to KO like, an offensive Bulu. Uh, you know, at the very least, it's going to do like 30-40%. So let's see what Salvance goes for. I can't believe I got that unlucky. Like, wake up, Hydro Pump, hit. So going for Rock Slide, I get a double hit, so I'll take it. Uh, I'm not planning on getting any... Like, if I were to be able to KO the Salvance with a single target Dazzling Gleam, that'd be really cool. But I have to assume that the Salvance is holding an Assault Vest. We flinch it. I take those. Those are things that I take. And uh, I guess I just take the Salvance too. So a little bit of luck back in my favor. We KO the Salvance, get a quick double KO back... And uh, we're going to see Bulu and something. We're going to see Bulu and something. Hopefully it's Feeny. That'd be so sick. Bulu. Alright, Bulu. And... Metagross. Okay. Oh, that kind of sucks. Because, like, I'd like the Earthquake that. But I'm locked into Rock Slide. And there's a Grassy Train. And I have a Lele, so what we're going to do here is we're actually just going to go for another Rock Slide because I have nothing else to do with my Garchomp. We're going to hard switch in Butterfree because there's really no reason to keep the Lele in other, other than going for random Thunders. But Bulu's probably faster than my Lele, if we're being honest. He probably has just a little bit invested in speed. So we're going to try and switch in Butterfree. Hopefully that'll work. We can go for Rage Powders. We can go for Sleep Powders on the Metagross. We can go for Bug Buzzes on either of those if I can get in safely. So we'll see what I can get. Lele's still pretty good. You just, I just have to use it correctly. Uh, Rock Slide shouldn't really be doing all that much, but it has a pretend chance to like flinch these guys, and that's why we're going to lock ourselves. Well, we're already locked into it, so you know there's nothing else we can do. We're not switching Garchomp out yet. We're forcing him to Bullet Punch. Kind of sucks, but we're eventually going to be able to recent out Lele and stop that Bullet Punch from happening. So Rock Slide hits on both. Let's see if we can flinch the Boo. I'm expecting like a Grass MZ or like a Wood Hammer on my Garchomp. Let's see what he goes for. And he just goes for a Zen Headbutt. My guy. No. No. Why? I didn't even think Boo could learn that. Like, what's the actual point in going for a Zen Headbutt? Is there one? I don't think there is. So, let's see. He's probably going to be bullet punching my Butterfree slot again. I could switch out Butterfree for, a late, for a Lele just to block and waste his time. Because Butterfree can't protect itself. Let's just do that. Lele will switch in here, and this might be a little bit greedy. This might be considered greed, but uh, I think this is okay. I didn't do like any damage from Metagross with that Rock Slide at all. But what this is doing is it's forcing him into Bullet Punch because he doesn't want to get flinched. And uh, you know now Lele's here, that he can't Bullet Punch anymore. So he's gonna have to start, you know, being at the mercy of my Garchomp. So let's see if he goes for a Bullet Punch. I'd like to see Bullet Punch, please, please Bullet Punch me. There we go, there's the Bullet Punch, we don't take those. And Psychotrain blocks it, Rock Slide comes in, double hits again. We did a ton of damage to Bulu last time. And let's see, let's see if we get the flinch, flinch, show it to me. Nature's Madness, there we go. Better than nothing. On to the Garchomp slot, that's much more effective than Zen Headbutt. And he doesn't take the damage that he's supposed to be taking. So let's see, I'm going to go for one last Rock Slide. Maybe not one last Rock Slide, I'm going to Rock Slide here. And I'm actually going to protect with my Lele, I think. And then next turn, I'm going to Electric MZ, that boo, the uh, Metagross slot. So we're protecting here because I don't want my Lele just to get attacked by the Bulu and, like, get one shot or something. I want to guarantee that the uh, Bulu goes down to Rock Slide damage. So we're protecting here. Rock Slide's coming out. We get another double hit. Can we crit the Bulu? Just get it off the board. He's so close to going away. So Bulu's taking the damage. Oh my gosh, he's a Super Berry Bulu! Oh, that's so annoying. That's that's actually the most annoying thing I've ever seen. Zen Headbutt onto my Garchomp. No! No, what's happening? And Garchomp goes down. Oh my goodness, this is bad. Okay, how do I deal with this then? Tapu Wu flinch. Didn't really matter. I was protecting. Alright, so I got Butterfree, right? He could just bullet punch me. Metagross isn't really at full anymore. Maybe my Electric Z can KO from here. It's kind of hard to say. I'm pretty sure he's going to be bullet punching them. I mean, I'll try and sleep out of the Metagross. I have to Psychic the, uh, the Boo. I don't want to. Because he could just wood hammer me right in my face and I'll die. But it's, I, it's, I have to do it. So let's see. 
If you if he bullet punches my Butterfree, that would suck. I wish Butterfree got Hurricane, you know, just like Vivalon. Vivalon gets Hurricane. Why can't Butterfree get Hurricane? That's what I'm. That's what I always wish would happen. I mean, I'd probably miss all my Hurricanes, even though I have Compound Dives, but still, Hurricane would be pretty nice right now. Air Slash doesn't cut it. So Sleep Powder, he's not bullet punching. Okay, I'll take those. Those are definitely things that I take. Please, Lele, don't eat a wood hammer and die. I'm faster than the boo. I'll take it. These are things that I take. Bulu is going to go down, and we're going to be in a pretty good spot against this Metagross. So Metagross is asleep. That's his first turn guaranteed to sleep. I can't believe we, like, came back after almost throwing it. I don't even think I almost threw. I just think that, like, the Super Berry on Bulu was just out of this world. I thought it was Z-move, like, the whole time. So we're going to go for Bug Buzz. We're going to go for the Electricium Z onto the Metagross. Hopefully he doesn't wake up and just bullet punch my Butterfree. Cool. Bug Buzz comes onto the field. Look at this. It's actually going to be doing good damage. I'm not going to lie. That is good damage. And then we're faster than him, remember, with our Lele. So we're just going to be able to slam a huge Electric MZ. He probably thought, I'm fighting Psychic. I'm fighting Mood Blast. Well, this is Electric MZ Lele. It's a, it's a completely different monster. And we're just going to be able to slam a huge Thunder Boosted Gigavolt Havoc into this Metagross. Should be able to pick up the KO because I assume it's the standard weakness policy set. It's obviously not like an Assault Vest set or anything because he was taking big damage from Bug Buzz. So we are going to be able to KO this guy. Butterfree put in work, and I just, I don't know why he didn't just bullet punch the Butterfree. Maybe he didn't know that Psychic Crane, like, didn't protect him? Or, like, my Butterfree could have just gotten KO'd by Bullet Punch. But I think he went for the Greed Play to take a, I, I think he tunneled on Lele just a little bit too much at the very end. He's like, oh, I can beat the Butterfree with Bulu. I just got to KO the Lele. But in reality, the, the Butterfree totally won the game. So we're going to hop another one. We're going to see if we can keep the win streak alive. Here we go. All right, so we're going up against Milotic Muck, Arcanine, Garchomp, another Bulu, and a Nihilego. There's only one juicy Gigavolt Havoc target. I'm going to hit it. Do I Lele Blim this guy? Is Lele Blim, like, the play here? I think Lele Blim's actually really, really good here. Yeah, I don't see a reason why Lele Blim, and I, it's been a hot minute since I've used Lele Blim. I think it's still really, really good. So we're going to go Lele Blim. I still think I should bring my Garchomp. I could also Butterfree a lot of these mods, but we're going to start off Lele Blim. Garchomp. And is Mosa the right play or Salazzle? I think Mosa is definitely better as Ice Beam for Garchomp, High Jump Kick for literally everything, Poison Jab for the Bulu. Uh, yeah, most is the last good pick. Cool, this is this should be pretty good. I think I can actually win this one. Um, just gotta watch out for Arcanine. I think Arcanine's the biggest threat here, because my Lele doesn't really have that much KO potential on it. Like, I think Shadow Ball Psychic can KO an Arcanine, even if it's like full HP specialty. Uh, and other than that, you know, Arcanine can snarl me, which would be really, really bad. So, like, if I went for Tech uh, Tailwind, and he snarled my Drift Blim, I don't think I could still KO it unless I got a special D-drop from the, uh, Shadow Ball. So, we'll see what happens. Arcanine's probably a bit of a problem, and he has no reason to not bring the thing. Like, Arcanine's good against Mosa, it's technically usable against Salazzle, and it's really good against, well, not even really good, it's, can intimidate my Garchomp, and then if you play correctly, switch it out and not eat an Earthquake, it's pretty good. So, we'll see what happens. Uh, he didn't have any Wide Guarders in his team, so I don't really think that there's any problem with just spamming AoE moves against this guy. So we see Garchomp and Muck against the Lele Blim. I'm going to probably protect Tailwind, right? I don't necessarily have to. You know he's going for Rock Slide and uh, either Knock Off or Poison Jab. I think he's going to be going for the Knock Off. It shouldn't KO or anything, though. So I'm just going to go for the Tailwind and the Protect. I don't really see a reason why I don't have to. So it's uh, a little bit safe, but... I, I'm fine playing safe. I feel I have the advantage. He can make a read here and go for the hard nuke of my Drift Blim. But in reality, I don't want to just lose my Lele just for shits and giggles. So, yeah, he's switching out the Garchomp. He doesn't want to eat a Willowis from that slot, probably. Coming in with Bulu. Still able to eat the uh, the Willow. I would I would totally Willowis a Bulu. Uh, let's see what happens. Uh, so, protect from Lele. This almost makes me think that he's poison jabbing my Lele. I will see. Maybe he thinks that I'm Scarf Lele? Like, maybe? Maybe? And he's switching to Bulu to, like... Oh, he's going for the knockoff. Cool. No. Oh, he knocked off my Lele, though. Okay, okay. So he went for, a, like, a read of a read. And I'm like, nah, I'm just playing standard, man. So I think I am going to Will-O-Wisp this Bulu. 
and I might be switching out my Lele. Actually, that means I should probably go for a... Uh, I'm going to Will Wisp the Muck, actually. And I'm going to switch out Lele for Garchomp. And then he's going to think that I can Earthquake, but I'm actually going to Poison Jab his Boo, I think. And if we can gimp the Bulu, I think that's going to be really good. And also, what we're doing here is we're saving uh, the ability to reset the terrain for later on in the game. I do hit my Will-O-Wisp on the Muck. That's pretty good. And uh, let's see what his Bulu goes for. His Bulu can go for Wood Hammer, what have you. Doesn't really matter to me. He's he's Whirlwinding. He's slower than the Muck. He's He knocked off my Scarf, too. That's actually a good thing for me. Um, he's going for Whirlwind, though. That's something you don't see every day. Please send out my Salazzle. Please send out my Salazzle. Just send it out. Most of, wait, I brought, I brought most of my bad. Same thing. We're, we're still in a good spot. I'm about to, I'm legit about to earthquake my Mosa. <laughs> um, I could high jump kick, but I don't. I just think it'll miss. Well, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna be poison jabbing this Bulu slot because I would love to get a beast boost, and uh, I think we're just gonna rock slide. He has like actually, who would be switching out? It'd be Bulu, right? No, Muck could be switching out too. I'll just Dragon Claw. I'll just Dragon Claw the Muck. If he switches out into Garchomp, that's huge damage. And I'll, I'll deal that to him. And also, he'll just take big damage from Dragon Claw. This should be okay. Remember, I still have a Tailwind up. So, Bulu's protecting. That's completely fine. If he wants to, like, knock off or poison it by Mosa, he's burned. Like, it... Oh, double protect. Yeah, this is this is a okay. He's wasting turns on my tailwind, sure, but I don't really feel threatened by this at all. And we know that he has like a guard chomp in the back. It sure it could be a scarf chomp, but I still think Mosa's in like a decent spot. Like it's weird that he has a guard chomp and Bulu. Also, that's kind of weird. All right, so we know he now knows the plays that I want to make. So I think what he's gonna do is switch out the Bulu for guard chomp. And so what we're gonna do is run a poison jab that slot. And it's going to chunk his Garchomp just a little bit, like 10, 15%. And then we're going to actually follow that up with a Dragon Claw. And what this does is it's, the Poison Dab should just be enough to KO the Bulu. That means the Dragon Claw would get redirected into the Muck slot anyways, which is exactly what we originally wanted to hit. But I think what this does is it, uh, it's just a little bit better targeting and it guarantees that we get what we want. So, well, not even guarantees. Like, let's say he switched out Bulu for something random. Uh, just double targeting that slot means whatever's switching in, you know, let's, let's say it's Crocodile, that same thing, that's going to deal like over 50% because it's a double target into that slot. So we get our Beast Boost, and uh, we're going to redirect the Dragon Claw, and he doesn't even know that we correctly targeted like that, but uh, that's fine with me. That's actually really big damage on Muck. So uh, we're just going to proc its Berry, he's still burned, and uh, let's see what he goes for. Probably just a knockoff on my Mosa, but like, look at the damage, it's... It's actually completely fine. He takes off our life orb, but we already have the beast boost, which means we don't even really need it anymore. I'm thinking he's probably going to be sending out Garchomp here, going for, like, uh, Protect with Muck Earthquake, maybe? I'm actually thinking about just going for uh, Protect with Mimosa and Dragon Clawing his Garchomp next turn. If he sends the Garchomp out, because my Tailwind's now gone, I'm really thinking that it is Scarf Chomp. And, uh, you know, we'll probably be able to tell after this turn. Maybe? I have no shame in switching out my, my Pheromos. Oh, it's an Hilego. That is another user that can most definitely be Choice Scarfed. I'm going to protect with my Mosa. And one thing about Mosa that I really like doing is I like playing safe with this thing. You attack when you can't really get punished for it. But when you don't know what their item is and you don't know everything about the state of play, I think it's safe to protect or like spam sub with it. Because I really think it's going to be Scarfed. I think it's going to be Power Gemming my Mosa. So we're just going to protect and use Earthquake. You gotta think about why did the guy actually send the Nihilego out here? What is he trying to get done? Is he gonna try and trick room me? That would be pretty good. But it would cost him his Nihilego most likely. Uh, even though there's a grassy train on the board, this Earthquake is still four times effective on a Pokemon that has a very, very low base defense. So we're gonna see what he's going for here. Earthquake would also really do a ton of damage against Muck. So I have to wonder why he really sent it out. Well, I mean, we're, we're gonna find out. So he's going for a Grass Knot on my Garchomp. That is that is not the play. That is not the play. It also deals... Like, for some reason, for some reason, Grass Knot makes contact, too. So that is also going to, like, break a potential Sash that guy had. We should be able to KO it this turn. And uh, we're also going to soften up the Muck at the same time. 
Yep, Nihilego goes down. For some reason, that was going on a little bit too slow, and I was like, am I not going to KO this Nihilego right now? That's crazy. But uh, he's going for a knockoff, and uh, he hit the Garchomp correctly. I guess that's a, a pretty good nuke into the Garchomp slot. I know there's two ways I can do this. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is just Poison Jab the Boo Boo and uh, probably Dragon Call the Muck, because I think after Muck took the uh, Rough Skin, even with the Grassy Train, he's... Uh, I could, Actually, I'm going to Earthquake. It's fine. I'll Earthquake my Mosa one last time. Earthquake wouldn't really... You guys think Dragon Claw KOs that muck from here? It's hard to say. Hmm. I don't want to earthquake my most because I don't want to crit it. Oh wait, shoot, I forgot he had Garchomp. I'm an idiot. I already KO'd the boo. What am I what am I actually thinking? Alright, so we have to assume that that is a scarf uh a scarf chomp, right? We have a Lele Bloom in the back, which means we're okay. We still have a full HP Lele Bloom. What is unfortunate is my Ferrimosa's protection on cooldown, so I'm going to have to Ice Beam the Garchomp. And normally Ferrimosa likes fighting Garchomp, but, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. I think I'm actually going to Earthquake here, just because I need to be able to kill the Muck. And even if I hit my Mosa, I think it's okay. Alright, Ferrimosa has Ice Beam. So he could be Vested, he could be Sashed, he could have Yachi Berry, and it looks like he is Vested Garchomp. So it looks like I'm actually really happy with this Earthquake play. He's going to be Dragon Clawing my Garchomp. Eh, it's alright. Even if he has a poison jab, I don't think it really does anything. Because he's, his muck is still burned. So, he was best at Garchomp. He made the right plays. Uh, let's see if he gets a crit or a poison on me. None of the above, please. And, uh, looks like he gets none of the above. So, he takes more burn damage. My Fairy Moose is still by far the fastest thing on the board. We're just gonna send Tapu Lele out here and go for Dazzling Gleam and pr uh, probably an Ice Beam? I think just another Ice Beam should be fine. Because we gotta seal up his faster Pokemon first. And, uh, you know, Dazzling Gleam should be able to KO Muck at this point anyways. So, we're gonna go for Ice Beam. Actually, no, we're gonna... We're actually gonna Z-Move. Actually, do I, I don't want to Z-Move that Muck. But I want to guarantee... Like, I don't know if it's full HP special yet, because I've only actually hit it with physical attacks. The smarter play here is actually to Gigavolt have it the Muck. I think it shows my Z-Move, sure. But what it does is it guarantees that we win the game. And, uh, if he protects, he might actually still take out from Burn. So, yeah... Unfortunately, we have to reveal our Z-move. You may argue with me and think that I don't have to Z-move, that I could have just went Ice Beam and then Dazzling him to take it out. But, I, I just wanted to make sure. Uh, actually, you know, I'm wrong. I should have just Dazzling him. I don't have to be on the Z-move. So, it sucks that I revealed my Z-move. That's misplay. So, stuff like that happens when you're still learning how to play with the team. I forgot that I was going to be dealing single target damage with this Dazzling Gleam. Single target damage with Dazzling Gleam. Not Life Orb, not Specs, would have KO'd the Muck, it wouldn't have cost me anything. Um, and it's not like I wasn't going to win, I just uh, I just didn't take into account that Garchomp was vested, which means he couldn't protect bait me. I was thinking like, well what if Garchomp protect baits me, and then like my Dazzling game is, would be single target. And I don't think like, I don't think double target Dazzling would have KO'd the Muck, but uh, obviously it was vested so it had to anyways we won that game pretty good we made a little bit of a misplay towards the end let me know if you think that was a misplay would you have just went for the dazzling gleam or would you have blown the z move there remember pokemon is a game where you try to preserve your information as much as possible so if this was a best of three that would have been a really bad thing to do to show your z move if you didn't if you didn't have to before so let me know what you guys think about this team about these games in the comments below and i will see you guys next time peace out